like when it upload it upload like like privately so a lot of time like when we because we haven't tried stream y'all since the 12th because when we yeah. upload it it upload privately you know i think it might have uploaded probably again Let's see if it's uh yeah if it's online. Yeah. So we we live? Yeah, we live. So it worked. It should. It's two people on the comment board. It's good to say. Okay, all right. The Wadi Habashim Al Shah. Hey, Shalawan, Shalawan. Shalawan. First off, we want to give all praise on and glory. To Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rokah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah, and the sincere salutation to Yahweh, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. All right, we just want to go into a lesson through the Spirit on not having a continuing city in this place, but we seek one to come. All right, the Lord has a rest prepared for us through the Spirit, but this place is not our rest. All right. And that's that's the hope that we have. The helmet of salvation involves that hope for the kingdom, actual rest. All right. Our people have been convinced that this is what life is supposed to be like, mm -hmm. you know, growing old and waxing old in your enemy's land is not the, the intention that the Lord has for us at the end of this. All right. But we seek a, a kingdom to come. All right. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 16. It says, but to the. No, let me see. Uh, um, hit. Um. 14 Where you at? 14 Alright, come This is our Hebrews 13 and 14 It reads For here we have no continuing city But we seek one to come Go ahead bro. And just like the brother was saying You know Right now we don't have a continuing city You know This place is not our rest Like the brother brought out Which we might as well get, right? Yep Since we already were quoting it This is Micah 2 and 10 It reads Arise ye and depart For this is not your rest Because it is polluted It shall destroy you even with a sword destruction and this place is polluted you know how can you rest in a place that promotes everything that's against your power all right everything that is, is promoted here in america is rebellion against your how about shimei was shy how can this be your rest you know you look around and all your people are in a lower state man every every one of your nation is in the lower state even though some jakes may have a piece of the pie they still in the lower state yeah. because they being attacked by demons they being attacked by them higher ups you know, they're in these different rooms where they're seeing all the uh, abominations and, and filthiness. So they're being attacked too. You know, that's why the Lord said, this is not your rest. Arise ye and depart. And that arise ye and depart is not talking about physically. All right. We have no need to depart out of America, Babylon the Great. All right. Right now, what it's speaking about is arising and departing mentally and spiritually. All right. The Lord will handle our physical departure when he returns, Lord willing, we're that number. But right now, it's essential for that mental and spiritual departing from America. Because if you stay... Uh, if you're if you're if your mind and your your spirit is attached to this place, eventually eventually you'll be polluted. Eventually you will succumb to the demons of, of Babylon, man. That's why the Lord constantly harps on us not being uh, entangled with the affairs of this life. You know, uh, uh, being transformed by the renewing of our mind. You know, having our conversation in the heavens. You know, uh, being uh, uh, having a holy conversation. All right, so that we we constantly have our eye focused on that continual city, that city to come, which is this, uh, which is the kingdom of Israel, spearheaded by Yahweh Shai Mashiach, who is our Lord. All right, and one hundred forty-four thousand elect men of the nation of Israel. All right, that's what we seek. All right, that continual city, that everlasting city. Hey, real quick, uh, Shalom to everybody on the comment board. Shalom, how about Shemal Shai Brakatha? How about Shemal Shai Brakatha? GMS Yawanathan put Second Peter three and thirteen. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness, man. Right. And that's what we want. You know, you got Edomites out here who, who have grown up in a family, in a household where their grandfather was born in. Jake don't even know what that, that kind of reality is like. Being able to be in the same house for seven to eight generations. All right. That's something that's so that's completely foreign to our people, man. All right. And that's what the Lord is preparing a greater rest for us, man. Our people have been conditioned to believe that this is all there is. Right. All right. And we had uh, talked about it briefly on the highways and hedges of the experiment they did with the fleas, where they put the fleas in this glass jar. And the fleas, after a point in time, you know, the guy released them out of the jar, but they can only jump as high as the lid of that jar. 
And that's how our people think. They lack that vision of the kingdom. They've lost hope in the vision of actual rest. And they've traded it for this, which is symbolic rest. It's not even real rest. Mm -hmm. Your PTO days is not real rest. Because even in your PTO days, you're thinking about your bills. You're thinking about how your situation is going to get resolved. You have children and you're worried about them children. All right, before they're even born, you find out you're real pregnant and you worry instantly. Yeah. You don't even get to enjoy the act of the Lord giving you a son or a daughter. That's not rest. Right. And that's what the Lord is preparing for us. Matter of fact, I got this real quick. This is second Edris 2 and 10. Thus saith the Lord unto Edris, tell my people that I will give them the kingdom of Jerusalem, which I would have given unto Israel. Their glory also will I take unto me and give these the everlasting tabernacles, which I have prepared for them. They shall have the tree of life for an ointment of sweet savor. They shall neither labor nor be weary. We don't even know what that's like to labor and not be weary, to not labor and not be weary. Jake always tired. Yeah. Your, your, um, your active function is tired, man. That's why you always need coffee. All right. Jake work. He wake up to coffee and go to sleep to Hennessy. That's not a life, man. Yeah. Now the Lord made certain things for our, our, our pleasure, but that's not a life. That's what you do to escape from life. And to give yourself a, a pick-me-up to go through this life, man. As the curses say, I would that it were evening. When it's in the morning. Yeah. That's not a rest for us, man. And just because you have a, a Jay-Z or a LeBron James, Esau tries to tell you that this is your rest. This is not our rest, man. They don't even rest. Right. You got Edomites, the Walton family. I use them as an example. Their whole family is resting. They don't have to go to Walmarts and check out the stores and make sure they, they just rest. Generation after generation. You think they worried when they find out their wife pregnant? No. Beautiful. Zion Kodash. America is an illusion of prosperity and stability. And only a very small percentage of Edomites get to actually enjoy the prosperity and stability. These Joe Six Packs don't even get to enjoy the rest of their kingdom. How much more so our people? That's why the Lord said, Arise ye and depart. Because the Lord constantly reminds us this is not our rest. Right. The fact that we got to wake up. On our way to work, we got to hit a coffee. We got to get the Colombian coffee. They're super strong. I like my coffee black. Why? Because we not in our rest. Our foot have, we have no ease in this place, man. Yeah. And it was designed for correction, not for comfort. But there is a comfort coming, man. Matter of fact, 2nd Edges 2, continuing in verse uh, uh, 13, it says, Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. Hey, yeah, yeah. right now, the Lord, right now what we're experiencing is the Lord answering our prayers. Yep. All right, our sign and our crying, it hasn't gone unheard, I can. All right, the Lord has been hearing each and every one of our supplications. That's why these things are happening around the four corners of the globe. The Lord is tearing up the earth for our sakes, man. Understand that. And these are according to the promises that he made to our forefathers, man. Just like uh, the brother Yawanda uh, put it on uh, 2 Peter 3 and 13. All right, these are according to the promises that the Lord left with our people, man. The Lord is starting to come through on his word, man. All right, that's why we see the earth being torn up, man. That's why we see our people uh, being uh, the imparted with the spirit of truth, you know, yeah. the spirit of faith. This is why we see these things is because the Lord is hearing our supplication and he's preparing that kingdom for us. It's already prepared. All right. The Lord is just waiting on that on it, on his time to come back. All right. And, 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 and to give it to his elect man, to share it with his elect. Real quick. You know? This is uh, Hebrews chapter four and verse one. Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith and them that heard it. <laughs> right. And that's and that's the downfall of, of two thirds of our people, of course, is because they can't see they can't see the bigger picture. The Lord didn't impart in them faith. All right. In order to see this big picture, in order to see this continual city. All right. To envision it, to take part of it before it's actually manifested on the earth. You have to mix these things that we hear with faith, man. You got you got to, man. man. Look, look, the Lord didn't put these words here in this book for us, for us to continue to read and to read and to read without believing it, man, without actually implementing it, man. These things were put in place for us to actually embody, to actually believe with every fiber in our being. That's the promises, the prophecies. 
All right, the salvation, the mercy, the judgment, all of it, all of it encompassed was meant for us to have faith in, man. And without faith, this word won't profit you. You can't see this continuous city. And right now, you can the comment board, brothers on the comment board, brothers doing lessons around the four corners of the globe. This is that continuous city being built up right now. Right, right. Right now, in the midst, in the midst of our enemies, what did the Lord say? He'll prepare a table for us in the midst of our enemies, man. And that's exactly what's happening right now. All right. Hey, Will. And for those brothers who know, you know, when you get to fellowship with the brothers, that's a small taste of the kingdom. Oh yeah. You know, when you get to fellowship with the brothers, that's a small taste of the kingdom of heaven, man. And that's what the Lord gives us. This is why the kingdom doesn't come by observation. It's being seen in the minds of the elect, man. But it will manifest. It's not just going to stay on comment boards and, and YouTube forever. Eventually, the kingdom that's written about is going to manifest in the physical world that we dwell in. And most of our people have lost faith in that promise that was left to us. Mm -hmm. They don't believe that we have a, a rest prepared for us. That's why they settle for Babylon the Great, because they don't believe ultimately that the Lord has a rest for us. You know, um, I remember the elder, um, Elder Ariella said this, you know, Jay, uh, growing up in this society, don't believe they deserve anything good to happen to them, man. Mm -hmm. They believe that this is just our position in life forever. And we got to pass this down to our children's children's children, man. This is a temporary state of being. The Lord is preparing something great. Matter of fact, real quick, before you make your point. Mm -hmm. This is uh, 2 Edris chapter 2 and verse 34. And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, and that's talking about Jake, that hear and understand, look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest. For he is nigh at hand that shall come in the end of the world. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore, man. Right. And it says, be ready to the kingdom. Man. Hey, how do we make ourselves ready? It's like those five, uh, the parable of the five virgins, you know, five are foolish, five are wise. And those wise, wise virgins, they stored up oil. And as soon as the Lord knocked, they were ready. They were ready. You know, and we want to be ready. We don't have to. We don't want to have to get ready when the Lord returns. We want to be ready. When the Lord cracks those clouds, we want to be the water of Yahweh by Shemiah was shot. We want him to return to our glory, or to our to our amazement, not to our not to our uh, our judgment. Or you know? regret. Regret the water. Not to our regret, man. We want the Lord to return unto our glory. You know, but if I may say this, yep. to the point that the brother was making earlier, you know, growing up here, Jake believes that nothing belongs to them. You know, and that's because like like he was going into earlier, it's that it's that flea bottle. You know, Jake has been broken. And 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 like it says in Deuteronomy 28 chapter, thy enemy shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And there's no need for a yoke of iron on our people anymore because that yoke is in their mind mentally. But now through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, we've been we've been freed from those bonds. If I can get two precepts. Come on, because you know how 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 bad that is to the only time you get joy is on wicked holidays with your family. You barely enjoy that. Yeah. Very that's that's the only time when you think about your childhood growing up. What do you think about them, them barbecues or them festivals that you can count on one hand? That's not the life. That's not a life, man. That's not how we, the Lord designed for us to, to live. This was our punishment, not our rest. And that's why the Lord said in Micah 2 and 10, arise ye and depart for this is not your rest. You were never designed to settle here permanently. We were always supposed to have a pilgrim mindset here that this is temporary. The Lord is preparing a kingdom for us, man. But you have to believe that. You have to envision yourself in the kingdom. You have to envision that, man. That's what the helmet of salvation is. You got it? Yeah, that's beautiful right there. Uh, Virgin Island, Straight Gate. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah, how about Shemel This is uh, Hosea 66, 6 and verse 1. I yeah. think it's 66 and, 6 and verse 1. 6 and 1. It says, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he have torn, and he will heal us. Man. He have smitten, and he will bind us up. All right, hey, look, the Lord torn us at one point in time, and we 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 still torn. But that promise was what that He'll heal us back up, that He'll that He'll that He'll bind us back up. He'll bind those wounds, and that's what we're in the midst of right now. The wounds being binded, brothers not brothers not tripping off the things of the world no more. Right, you know we're not in that that dark mentality, because black culture, Latino culture, Native culture, that's a dark mentality. That's Man. a mentality that's that's a swift path to destruction. We were all crash dummies. Yep. To put it to put it simply, we were all crash dummies before we came into this truth. 
And that's the Lord binding us up again, you know, giving us that spirit of faith, giving us that spirit of truth. And now we're able to maneuver in this valley of the shadow of death with season, with poise. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord is upon us. Why? Because we have faith now. We have a, a, a newfound hope, a renewed hope in what? Those promises that were made to our forefathers. You know, we have a newfound hope in the healing that's coming not only to us, but to our nation. Man, matter of fact, verse two uh, of, uh, that, of that precept, Virgin Island Straight Gate uh, put up. After two days, will he revive us? And the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Ooh. So right now we're being revived. We're being raised up. All right. That links up with uh, Revelation, the 11th chapter, where it talks about our dead bodies. But now the Lord is breathing the breath of life back into us. And we're beginning to call upon our power again. And you have to envision the kingdom, man. Right. Envision you having children and getting to enjoy them. Envision you having to never be tired of work. Right. Because you got Edomites that live in this society that you never see, that never work. They don't have to worry about work. Their children don't have birth certificates. They can have their children be birthed in their, in their estate. Yeah. That's a reality for Edomites out here. And that's the reality the Lord is preparing for us, man. You having a, you, uh, the scripture says, small one shall be a thousand. Your children shall play with the uh, with, with poisonous snakes. That's cold. This is what the Lord is preparing for us. That's something cold. greater. Why would you settle for this? When the Lord is promising us something that, that Esau can't even imagine. Esau is trying to do all of these different things around the world to get what the Lord is going to give you in the twinkling of an eye, man. That's why the scriptures say, pray for a few days unto you. There is a, a, a greater gift of, of hope and life that the Lord is preparing for us, man. Right. And that's what we have to continue to keep our mind on. That's what's going to keep that smile on your face when you meditate on the kingdom. Seeing Yahweh Shah in the flesh. Right. Could you imagine seeing Yahweh Shah at a festival? All right? At a, at a new moon uh, feast? Could you imagine Yahweh Shah smiling? Being in a good, a good mood? The Lord said he was going to rejoice over us with singing. Could you imagine that? Seeing Jake without number. Everybody having a good time and peace and in unity, man. Just as far as the eye can see, nothing but laughs, jokes, children, brothers having uh, wine, brothers giving gifts one to another. Our women being at peace and in order, even with each other. That's what the Lord is preparing for us, man. We're not supposed to settle for this. This is this was temporary. This was a punishment for us being spoiled children. You got it. If I get uh, if I get two, absolutely. Uh, I, I want to get two to your point, but I'm gonna get this one real quick since uh, just so it don't pass. This is uh, Hebrews six and verse seventeen. It reads, "Wherein the heavenly Father, willing more abundantly to shew unto the heirs of promise the immutability of His counsel, Ooh. confirmed it by an oath." It says, willing more abundantly to shoot unto the heirs of the pro of promise, the immutability of his counsel. And what are we through the spirit? We're of that. Uh, we're, we're joint heirs with Hamashiach. If so be that we suffer with him. Lord willing, we're the, uh, the elect. So the Lord uh, uh, made us privy to his immutable counsel, his unchanging counsel. All right. It says, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for the heavenly father to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor mm. of the soul, both sure and steadfast and which entereth into that within the veil. And it says that hope is your anchor. That hope in the Lord, man, that the Lord actually, man, that the Lord care about us, man. Hmm. Humbly speaking, the Lord care about you. That's what Yahweh Shah when he was saying the numbers of your the number of your hairs are counted. He was showing how much the Lord cared for you. The Lord say our walls are continually before his eyes, man. Right. Don't let Babylon get in the way of that love that Yahweh Shemal Shah is showing us by giving us this hope. Right. Because that faith is a gift. For you to even believe that that you have an opportunity for salvation, that's a gift that the Lord opened your mind up to receive and understand, man. Okay. You got it. Hey, and if I may say this too to that point, you know. With this newfound hope, you know, you got to you got to realize, too, life is going to be hard. You know, this life is, is going to be hard. It's supposed to be hard. But I like to use this analogy. It's like complaining about is like a Jake at the job. You know, if any of you I can work construction and you work in the elements, you always had that one dude that's always oh, hot out here. It's cold out here. We know, bro. 
Because we out here with you. You know, we know life is hard. Right. But what are we going to do about it? We're going to get the work done. Right. So that then we can get in the we can get in the truck or we can get back to the yard and chill out. And that's what we're in the process of doing right now. Yeah, this life is hard, man. It's it's hard. You know, it's different things thrown our way that we sometimes you don't think you're ready for. But guess what? The Lord gave you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, faith, and a hope. And let me get this one real quick. This is Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 9. Man, I'll start at 8. For if Yahweh had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh by Shema mm -hmm. This is not it, but there remaineth the rest for us. It's coming. It's, that's the hope that we have, that that rest is coming to us, man. To be able to relax, to be able to be at peace with all of your people. Because it said it, it remained at the rest for the people of the Lord, man. Mm. Not for it's everybody, tough. but for the people of the Lord. The, the scriptures and numbers say that we shall dwell alone. We shall, be not, we shall not be reckoned among the people. A big family reunion forever with no expiration date. Yeah. Granny going to be in her right mind in that day. Right. Auntie and them, they gonna be in their right mind. <laughs> Passing gifts one to another, having children and being happy that you having children, man. Actually enjoying them, not work, not worrying about, man, I gotta be nice to this Edomite so I can, you know, hopefully keep my job because I got a family to take care of. Yeah. Our life hangs in the balance. But it, it wasn't meant to stay like this. That's the hope that we have through the spirit, man. Right. Continuing, it says, For he that has entered into his rest. He also has ceased from his own works, as Yahweh by Shemal Shai did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And right. that was to your point. You right. got it. Hey, in order to rest, you got to work. All right, work comes before play. All right, uh, 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 work comes before rest. You know, you got to work before you can rest. You got to get the work done. And right now, that's what we're in the process of doing. We got to get this work done in order for us to rest. All right, and right now, spiritually, the Lord has given us rest. He's given us rest from the affairs of this world. He's given us rest from, from the different uh, mental afflictions that you know you, you may come with, you know, living here in the Babylon the Great. The Lord has given us a rest, and it's true, within the brotherhood, you know, and that's something to cherish, and it's something that the, uh, and that's something to work toward uh, building, you know? Hey, real quick, this is, we got next, uh, Mac, and it's uh, Matthew 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Right. For, hey. for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right. Hey, and that's and brothers ain't worried about Man. keeping up with the Joneses no more. You know, we're not worried about uh, having a good job, having having a whole lot of money in the bank. We're not worried about these things no more, man. You know, we're, we're at rest with that. We're not worried about pleasing the people of this world. All right, we don't, we're not worried about that. Hey, because they're remaining the actual rest, rest. man. An actual, actual rest. rest, bro. Like, the Lord said everlasting joy. When you think about some happy moments in your life, how small and temporary was that happy moment? Maybe you got a gift you didn't expect, you know? Maybe you got the girl you wanted. Maybe you, you know, there's little moments in your life that you can look back on it and be like that was a, a time i had joy mm -hmm. the lord said he's preparing everlasting joy for us a joy that never ends that can't even be imagined in this society because of how much we labor all right to enter into that rest but that's what the lord is preparing for us that's why the lord said behold and wonder for he shall work a work in our day that we not we will not believe though it be told us now we talk about the prophecies when it relates to that but it's also the kingdom too because you got a lot of Israelites that know that they're Israel, but they can't envision exactly the kingdom and have that joy upon the hope of that kingdom and that rest. Mm -hmm. This is why the Lord left certain clues of what the kingdom is going to be like. So you could have that be an anchor unto your soul, that trust that the Lord has a rest prepared for us, man. That's why we don't run uncertainly, because we know that at the end of this, if we endure to the end, there's a rest that remaineth for the people of Yahweh by Shema Shah, man. Right. You got it. This is uh, Second Edges chapter eight. I'm gonna start at verse fifty-one. It reads, "But understand thou for thyself, and seek out the glory yes. for such as be like, like thee. For unto you is paradise open, the tree of life is planted, the time to come is prepared, plenteous is made ready, 
a city is builded and rest is allowed. Yet perfect goodness and wisdom, the root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and the moth is hid from you and corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Sorrows are past and in the end issued the treasure of immortality. Hey, can you imagine living forever in righteousness? Because the, the scriptures say that man's thoughts are always plagued with death. Right. Imagine being eternal, everlasting joy. That's what's being prepared through the spirit, man. That's why when you when you meditate on the kingdom, it makes your problems this big in this life. When you meditate on what the Lord is actually preparing for us, man, Lord willing, we're a part of that number. There's a rest being prepared, man. And, and we're going to get some of those examples, too. I'll go into uh, Isaiah 66 and get some of those examples. You got it up. I'll read it. Uh, well, let me get this then. Con. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 61. And I'm going to start at verse 1. You know, going back to that analogy, you know, about how the Lord has given us that rest he, uh, from being broken. This is uh, Isaiah 61 and verse 1. The spirit of the Lord power is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Yep. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. And can you imagine that? Can you imagine the good news that the Lord is preparing and you being a part of that? Not just, and we talk about this all the time because it's important. When you see and you hear about the blessings, you have to put your mind at that place and imagine the Lord talking to you directly. Right. Not just Jake in general. That's what the hope is. It's not a hope for a general salvation, but it's hope for you to have salvation. That's why you've received this truth. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being able to have servants, all right, to have a, a rulership and righteousness and be a part of that? That's what's being prepared. Not being tired. Not having to work your, uh, your hands to the bone. Not having to work 40 years for the Edomites just for them to give you a retirement benefits where you got to go to Medicaid and Medicare. Well, the only thing you can give your grandson is a watch right. or your Bible. There's an actual rest being prepared for us, man. And that should get you excited through the spirit. You got it. It reads, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our power to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old waste. Waste. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Yep. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Hey, can you imagine that? You sitting there at, at your estate and you watching, you know, your servants make sure your vineyard is, is, is trimmed and, and, and taken care of. That, that people are, are, are taking care of your children. You're putting your, your children in the hands of, of caretakers so you can actually enjoy life. Because the Lord say, uh, we're going to be called the priest of the Lord. And it's in that same chapter. You got it. It says, And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai. Men shall call you the ministers of our power. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory... Shall ye boast yourselves For your shame ye shall have double And for confusion They shall rejoice in their portion Therefore in their land They shall possess the double Everlasting joy shall be unto them Hey that's everlasting joy Shall be unto us man Lord willing we're a part of that number Of the first fruits Everlasting joy is being prepared through the spirit man That's why this life itself man Can't get you down man You can't let this life get you down Because that's what's being prepared Every day we wake up, we're closer and closer to the kingdom, man. Right. Hey, if I may hit him yep. with something the brother says all the time, you know, our worst day is our best day. You know, your worst day in this truth is your best day. Why? Because you still know who, who you worship. You still have the names of your heavenly father and your only begotten son. You still have faith, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. All right. Uh, um, you still have a sound mind. So our worst day is our best day, man. Real quick, this is Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Right. And the thoughts of the Lord toward his elect, uh, well, the whole nation, is thoughts of peace. But right now on this side is, is toward the elect. 
you know? And, and if the Lord is having these thoughts, who are you to have different thoughts? You know, who are you to think otherwise uh, uh, when it comes to uh, the Lord thinking thoughts of peace towards our nation? You know, the Lord made a promise to us, man. He said that he will heal us up. He said that he will heal our wounds. He said that he will uh, uh, lead us into captivity no more. He said right. that he'll give us an everlasting city, a, a rest. He said these things, man. All right, he has these thoughts of peace towards us. So who are you to think otherwise? You know, it's time to envision the kingdom. You know, you got to envision it for yourself. It's different when you hear the orders from the from the general himself. It's different when you hear the orders from the captain himself. Envision yourself hearing these orders from the captain himself. Yahushai. All right, Yahushai gave direct orders to his elect. Look, do the work. All right, fight for me. And at the end, I'll give you rest. Man, and that was a direct order. Can you imagine how Yahushai voice sound? Yeah. You know, Bro. could you imagine seeing Yahushai smile for the for like the first time? Like, could you imagine that? Bro. Can you imagine seeing Yahushai in the flesh? That like happens. the same way the wind touch your skin and you get to see certain things in this life and enjoy it. Could you imagine even having a nosebleed seat to see Yahweh Shah? Right. Just to see him move and just to see him talk and, and, and conduct the kingdom. Could you imagine that? Being able to see him say, hey, give a speech before all of Israel. Could you imagine that? Man, that's what be that's what's being prepared, man. There's there's a greater blessing and rest being prepared for us, man. It ain't all doom and gloom. We have to stand strong and keep our hands strong through the spirit to get through this time. But the rest is being prepared, man. Yahweh Shah is going, is going to be in the flesh, man. Lord willing, we're part of that number. You're going to actually get to see him, man. Right. He's going to look at you. Man, could you imagine Yahweh Shah, his, his, his gaze Bro, that, that coming upon you? That atmosphere got to be tough. That, the thoughts of peace, man. That's what's being prepared. The kingdom is being prepared. It ain't just having marriages and, and, and wives and children. And that's a beautiful thing. But the reason we focus on that is because the only that's the only thing that we can really measure the kingdom well, yeah, by. Yeah, because we deprived of it. Because right we now. deprived yeah. of it. But there's a greater... Could you imagine chariots over all the houses of Israel? When you walk out your door in the kingdom and you just look up and it ain't nothing but chariots everywhere. Set up as a defense. Could you imagine what, witnessing a, a small child lead animals, play with snakes? <laughs> Could you imagine that? Crazy. That's what's being prepared, man. Right. Jake loved going to the zoo to see life, but it'd be tainted because them animals be miserable. Right. Could you imagine that? Children playing with lions. You can let your children out the house and just not worry about them. That's the kind of rest that's being prepared, man. And ain't no, ain't no check in Babylon can equate to that. You got it. Uh, I got one real quick you, if you ain't got one. No, nah, yeah, you, you wanted Isaiah 66, right? Con, uh, let me get this one while you're getting that. This is uh, Isaiah 35 and 10. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Can you imagine them songs? Like them, them beautiful voices in this world, like the Beyonce's, but they all singing songs to the Lord. Them songs in the church, they, they always gave you that feeling. That's why Jay go to the church in the first place. Because them songs. Could you imagine them songs of Zion being sung in the kingdom? Yahweh Shah being there in the midst of those songs being performed? That's the kind of rest the Lord is preparing for us, man. And it's going to happen in the flesh, man. It ain't just going to be in our imagination forever. You got it. Uh, Isaiah 66. And uh, I'm going to start at verse 1. Nah. Let me jump down to uh while you getting that real quick uh great millstone daily bread 411 the water Akia. uh this is isaiah 4 and 5 and the lord will create upon every dwelling place of mount zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense can you imagine that waking up and just looking up in the sky and instead of seeing stars you see chariots just everywhere, man. The streets paved with gold. Could you, man, could you imagine that? Right, the vibration of that. The beauty of the kingdom being prepared through the spirit. Man, call me how about Shemel Shah for even giving us this kind of hope? Because in the world, your your hope was that you have a you have a wife, you have a white picket fence, you have a good job. Mm -hmm. Here it is, the Lord said we gonna never labor or be weary. 
Could you imagine never being tired? Like never being tired. Could you imagine? That's what the Lord is preparing right. for us, man. Right. You got it. I'm going to get this to Isaiah. Uh, when Isaiah 66, I'm going to jump come on, come uh, on. Isaiah 65. Yeah, wherever the Spirit carry you, Akio. This is uh, Isaiah 66 in verse 22. It says, 21, And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Ooh. Hey, the scriptures say, Our seed shall be known among the Gentiles. That means a regular Israelite can go into any foreign land in the kingdom of heaven and get treated like the top, like the top-notch Israelite in the kingdom, man. Right. Because Jake love that 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 attention. You know, Jake be doing a lot of things. In the kingdom, you're gonna have that if that's what you want. You can go to another land and, and they're gonna be like, oh, that's one of the children of Israel. Yeah. That's one of the sons of God. Face Gator. They, your seed gonna be known. That means it's gonna be a, a certain glow to our people, man. Right now, there's a certain salt that that none of these other nations can touch. Yeah. How much more so in the kingdom when the Lord upgrades our, our bodies, gives us that glorious appeal, that that beauty that we had in the ancient world, but upgraded. That's what's being prepared for us, man. That's why the scriptures say, "Pray for a few days unto you." This should be an exciting time because everything you see according to prophecy means we're one step closer to that. Right. You got it. This is uh, Isaiah 65. And uh, I'm going to start at verse 13. It reads, Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen for the lord power shall slay thee and call his servants by another name that he who hath blessed himself in the earth shall bless himself in god of truth and he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the god of truth because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hid from mine eyes Ooh. verse 17 for behold i create a new heaven heavens and new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind and, and that new heaven and new earth it's speaking about a refreshed earth, all right, a, 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 a new rulership coming into power. It says, and the former shall not be remembered nor come to mind. And we're going to be at so much rest, so much peace. We're not even going to think about this no more. We're not even going to think about this captivity no more. It's not going to matter. We're going to have abundance before us. We're going to be able to be. We're going to be able to actually explore explore, and, and adventure and, and, and actually get deep into the Lord's creation like we were created to do. Hey, the scriptures say none shall make us afraid. You ain't gonna be. You know how Jake in the, uh, right now. I ain't oh, going. Yeah. I ain't. No, nah, I, don't, I don't like doing. Yeah. You know, I don't want to go into the woods. I ain't trying to. You know, I ain't trying to. <laughs> yeah. I ain't trying to swim all. Hey, Jake, going to go to the beach and just get their feet wet. Yeah, we ain't gonna have no do. fear of nothing on the earth, man. We are gonna be able to enjoy life, man. Mm -hmm. If you want to go into the Pacific Ocean and just dive and see the mountains that the Lord got underwater, feel free to do so. That's what's being prepared for us. You think Esau's imagination is greater than the Heavenly Fathers? Here it is, they make all of these movies, like Avengers and all of these different movies about different galaxies. We just talking about Earth right now. We ain't even talking about the, 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 the other mansions that have been prepared. Just Earth and just what we can see and taste and touch and feel. That kind of rest is being prepared, but then there's things that eyes have not even seen that we can't even imagine. Right. And it's like the Lord say, if you if a son asks his father for bread would he give him a stone the lord says his good pleasure to give us the kingdom it's going to be like um and it's that wicked holiday christmas but it's going to be similar to how to, how a parent be excited to give their children gifts like yeah, he, he going he going to yeah, go crazy he when he see this one yeah. when i give him this one he going that's how the lord is looking he's looking forward to giving us the kingdom man everything in the process of time man oh, yeah. brothers love having stones brothers love incense that's all of that's going to be prepared for us. That's what we have to look forward to through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. Look at what the Lord gave Esau, the right. one he hate. He got $7 million yachts. All right, he got he got a, a yacht with a boat out that come out of it. He can, he can at least go to the atmosphere. He get rest. Yeah. He got a estate. He got servants. And the Lord hate this man. How much more so the Lord's chosen, the apple of his eye. That rest is going to be glorious, glorious man. man. Glorious. To see Yahweh shot in the flesh and enjoying life, 
man, that's man, that's that's worth every bit of sweat that we putting down out here right now, and then some, man. To see that, just to be in the in the company of them, seeing King David back in his position for the naysayers, to see him, and to know, oh man, that's yes, there go Elijah, yeah. yeah, oh there go King David, mama, there go that man, yeah. <laughs> To see us all in good case, man. No, no poor Edomite. I mean, no, no, no poor Israelites. Yeah. All right, we're gonna have some. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. Edomites. That's that goes without saying. They're yeah. gonna get done dirty, they as they should. Oh yeah. But in the kingdom, ain't gonna be no more poor Jakes. No more. Let me reach inside my pocket yeah. and give Jake a dollar because I feel bad. Yeah. We all gonna be good, man. That's what we have prepared for us through the Spirit. We don't have a continuing city here, but that's what's to come. That's what we have to look forward to. Right. And, and if I may say this too, and it's important to have something to look forward to. You know, the reason why a lot of these people in the world are so bugged out is because they have no vision of the future. They don't know what's what's going on right now. They don't know how they're going to get out of this situation and they don't know what's coming. But through the spirit and power, Yahweh Shema was shot. He's given us a vision of that continuing city. All right. And it's not too far fetched. We can see it right now within different brothers. The, uh, the scriptures say that the kingdom of heaven is within you. And we can see that continuing city, that rest yeah. being built up right now. But uh, this is back in Isaiah 65. Yeah. Let me get, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, finish. Go ahead, you got it, because mine a little bit longer. You got it. It says, um, verse 18, But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Mm. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more fence and infant of days, nor an old man that have not fulfilled filled his days. For the child shall die in hundred years old, but the sinner being in hundred years old shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. <laughs> and right now it's, it's cold, man. Cause you know, me personally, I see a lot of Jake's building houses. You know, they they building all these houses and they don't, they don't have it in none of them. Yep. They don't even live nowhere near them. But the Lord said what? We're going to build houses and we're going to inhabit them, man. We're going to have mansions. We're going to have the house look like a city, man. Servants on servants on servants, man. You know, we're going to be able to inhabit our city, have vineyards, you know, have resources, man. True resources. It says they shall not build and another inhabit. Because that's what's going on now. And Jake that worked construction know that very well. Here it is, you putting down marble, you putting down granite, you installing cupboards, all right, you installing lines, and then when the finished product is done, you look around and you like, man, this, we did a good job, man, this is, and then somebody else get to come and live in that. You close the door, go back to your apartment. Yeah, you got to go back to your apartment and warm up the noodles. And don't trespass here, nigga. Yeah. yeah. That's not going to be our reality in, in the future. Right now, this is a temporary state of being. And again, that goes back to what we said earlier. This is the punishment that we deserve for being spoiled children yeah. when the Lord gave us things. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is not going to punish or hold anger forever. We're coming into the time where the Lord's going to enjoy giving us the kingdom. Just like when Jake loved, just like when Jake enjoyed giving their children gifts, like, man, yeah. you smile when you see the gift because you know how they're going to react. That's how the kingdom is being prepared for Jake, man. We have to continue to keep that hope in our mind. Uh, real quick, the land back off that, Ecclesiastes 37 and 25 says, The days of the life of man may be numbered, but the days of Israel are innumerable, man. You got it. It says, They shall not build and another inhabit. They say, hey, and our days are innumerable. Why? Because the Lord is going to give us that heart of flesh. Right. All right. So that we don't sin. Now, the penalty for sin right now is death. Right. So being in these corruptible bodies, man, this flesh, you know, these chains of darkness, we're subject to sin. You know, we're subject to go off every, even though we want to do right. But through the spirit, man, through those promises, that promise that the Lord made with our forefathers, he's going to give us that heart of flesh to where we can't go off. Which means what? Immortality for our nation. <laughs> An eternity to enjoy the Lord's creation to <laughs> and, and the earth alone gonna take us probably gonna take us thousands of years to explore and fully get acquainted with before we even go out to those other mansions, man. But that's what's being prepared. But it says, "They shall not build and another inhabit; they shall not plant and another eat. As for the days of a tree, as for 
For as the days of a tree right. are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them. And it says they shall not labor in vain. Our labor is not in vain. All right, we're not we're not doing this for no reason. All right, we can you can plainly see that we're doing this to to uh, we're doing this and things are things are happening, man. All right, the Lord is coming through. The Lord is playing out prophecy, man. As we're putting forth our hands to the plow, the Lord is moving, man. All right, it says, and I shall and it shall come to pass that before they call. I will answer. Could you imagine that? Before you even call, before you even start your prayer, the Lord just answer you? I didn't know what you want. You got it. <laughs> you got nah, it. bro, you got it. I, yeah, I already know what you want, bro. It's already done, you know? Go ahead. It you says, it. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. Man, could you imagine that? Seeing a wolf and a lamb, they just, they, they playing, they having a good time. Right. Bro, the Lord is preparing this for us, man. This ain't just words in the book. Right. You got it. It says, And the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat. They <laughs> shall not they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. Say of the say of Yahweh by Shem Yahusha. I got one real quick. This is Psalms one twenty six and one. And it says, A song of degrees. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said there among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Right, hey, and, and the reward for us sowing to the spirit right now is gonna is gonna be that everlasting. We're gonna reap everlasting rest. All right, we right now we reaping. You know, we sign and crying like we're supposed to be doing. All right, but the reward for that, all right, is gonna be that rest. All right, like the scripture saying, uh, Psalm sixty-eight. I think it's Psalm sixty-eight or fifty-eight. It says, "Verily they shall say there is a reward yeah, for Psalm righteousness." Verily it shall be said in the earth There was a reward for righteousness Right now people don't think there's a reward for righteousness They don't think there's a reward for following the Lord You know Why should I follow Why should I Man why should I give away the lust of the flesh It ain't like he coming back anytime soon You know it ain't, ain't like You know he, he, he actually real When in fact man there is a reward for righteousness man There's a reward for fighting this fight There's a reward for turning away the lust of the flesh Man there's a reward for these things And that reward is what rest Are you going to be able to do one of these let your shoulders down, man. You know, and actually breathe. Take in a, a, a fresh breath of air. And not all this polluted, you know, garbage. You're gonna have to you're gonna be able to actually rest. And not only you, but your nation, man. The whole nation. Real quick, this is Psalms chap uh, or Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 12. For thus saith Yahweh Shemal Shai, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be borne upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees. As one whom is his mother comforteth, so will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies, man. All of our enemies are going to be subdued through the Spirit, man. And we're going to be comforted by Yahweh by Shema Ushah. All right, and that's why we're going through this punishment now because better is the end of the thing, all right, than the beginning. We started off being in captivity since we left Egypt, but we're going to end in everlasting joy and salvation, man. Lord willing, we're part of that number. Right. Real quick, this is uh, Isaiah 45 and 17, and it reads, But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end man we that's what's being prepared for us man through the spirit and power of Yahweh by shimao shai and when you understand that this is not our rest this is too small and it's unfit when you look at what the lord has promised for us man you got another one uh one more, Come on. one more. this is uh second maccabees chapter 15 
in verse, I'm going to start at verse 10. The point is in 11. It says, and when he has stirred up their minds, he gave them their charge, showing them there with all the falsehood of the heathen and the breach of oaths. Thus he armed every one of them, not so much with defense of shields and spears, as with comfortable and good words. And beside that, he told them a dream worthy to be believed, as if it had been so indeed, which did not a little rejoice them. And this was his was his vision. Hey, but the point being, you know, he armed the people, you know, Maccabeus, he armed the people with comfortable words, which right now what we're doing through the spirit is exhorting the Lord's people to continue in the faith, to continue to, uh, the good fight of faith, because there's a, a reward for righteousness. There's a reward for this fight that we're fighting. And that reward is that continual city, you know, real quick. I got one more. This is Zephaniah chapter three and verse 16. It says, in that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, fear thou not, and to Zion let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy power in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly, who are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save her that halteth, and gather her that was driven out, and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. At that time will I bring you again, even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, saith the Lord, man. So this is going to play out before our eyes through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And that when you understand what's being promised to us, this place is not fit, man. You hasten to escape from this place. The captive exile hasteneth, all right, that he shall not die in the pit. We want to see these things with our own eyes through the spirit, man. Because the Lord said that at the end. He said, again, I, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes what we see going on in the world is the lord turning back our captivity brothers being gathered all right the few sisters being gathered mm -hmm. all right the kingdom being envisioned in the minds of the hopeful elect and then the lord topping your imagination of what it's going to be like yeah far exceeding your own imagination of what that moment is going to be like for you Lord willing, we're a part of that number. But that's how you have to look. You have to have a vision. Like Apostle Gabar says, you have to have that vision. Otherwise, you're going to fall short. If you're not holding on to that vision and that helmet of salvation. Yeah. All right. So you got another one? Mm, that was it. And so with that, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rokakodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yahshua Allah. And a sincere salutation to all you Akim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath who are believing this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom. Wa Abab Abal.